Hello everyone. Hope you all are revising circles. And in my previous session, I had done tangents. So of course, in this session, we are expected to do something about normal. So in this session, we will be taking normal to a circle and pair of tangents also. Now, if I have to start with normal to a circle, first we must understand what we mean by a normal. Now, how do I define the normal part? I say normal at a point to the circle is a line through the center and it has to be perpendicular to the tangent. I hope you have understood. Let me repeat. I said normal to the circle at a point is a line through the center and it should be perpendicular to the tangent. So if that is the case, then picture would look something like this. That C is the center of the circle. I have shown their tangent also. And I am drawing the line through the center and perpendicular to the tangent. Right? So there I have written normal also. So you can understand which line in that picture is the normal. Okay. Now if I have to proceed further, before that, you must remember that normal always passes through the center. And this we may be using if you go for derivation of equation of the normal. So next task what we need to do is equation of the normal. Now to get equation of the normal, point at which normal you are drawing is expected to be known. So I am starting with actually point form only. Now my point form requires a point x1, y1, circles equation that is x square plus y square equal to a square. I am taking this standard and simple equation initially. And I am straight away writing here equation of the normal as x upon x1 equal to y upon y1. Some of you may think that how do we get actually this equation? Then you can do this exercise. Point at which you are drawing normal, you mark that on the circle, call it x1, y1. Center, you are seeing there, it is 0, 0. And you take one more point on that normal. Call that as x, y. Now, if that point, suppose you have called as Q and point at which you are drawing the normal, you name as P and center is say C, then PC's slope and QC's slope and PQ's slope, they all would be same. Using that slope idea also, you can write this equation as X upon X1 equal to Y upon Y1. This is the standard form for equation of normal at X1 comma Y1 to the circle X square plus Y square equal to A square. Now, if I go for equation of the normal to the circle x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0 and point is again x1 comma y1, then I have given you straight away answer. But how I must have written that? Take your attention to the part y1 plus f upon x1 plus g. y1 plus f, you can always understand that as y1 minus minus f. And x1 plus g you can take as x1 minus minus g. So that can give you actually slope of pc if c is the center and p is the point at which you have drawn the normal. Okay. Now then what is left? Now slope is known to you. Point x1 y1 is known to you. Write standard slope point form and it is y minus y1 equal to m into x minus x1 where m here in our case is y1 plus f upon x1 plus g. This is one way of remembering. Some people try to write same equation in a form where all x terms are on one side and all y terms on our other side. Some people also do write it as x minus x1 upon y minus y1 equal to x1 plus g upon y1 plus f. Choice is entirely yours. The way you wish, you can always remember. Basic part is that you should know slope and you should know point. You should be in position to write equation of the normal. Right? So proceed from here further. And the next thing what we take here is that parametric form. Now, you must have seen me doing everything in parametric form also. Parametric form we have seen in straight lines also. We have seen parametric form in equation of the circle also. Now, parametric form, the moment I say, then there has to be some parameter. Okay. Now, x square plus y square equal to a square. If I am taking that as a circle, then a point on the circle in parametric form, we take as a cos theta comma a sin theta. Right? So now my x1, y1 becomes a cos theta comma a sin theta. What do you do? Your previous equation you see. It was x upon x1 equal to y upon y1. In the previous form I am saying point form. Now replace that x1 by a cos theta. Replace that y1 by a sin theta. And then you get x upon a cos theta equal to y upon a sin theta. Right? And you can simplify if you wish further. And it would lead to y equal to x tan theta. 
And what would be tan theta? Tan theta you can always replace by m also. And if you wish, you can remember that line as y equal to mx also. So that you can call a slope form also. So see, whether you call it slope form or you call point form, it is one and the same. Form always remains y equal to mx. Why is it so? Because center is origin and normal is going to pass through the origin. That is 0, 0. So form of the equation was anytime expected as y equal to mx. So y equal to mx you call or you call x upon cos theta equal to y upon sin theta. Whichever form you want to remember, you can remember. Okay. Now let us proceed further. Now I am talking about pair of tangents. Now the moment I say pair of tangents, you are expecting two tangents. So try to draw the figure. I am taking a point P, x1, y1. I have drawn their circle. I have drawn two tangents also through P. One is PQ and other one is PR. I am showing their radius also. And I have also shown PQ equal to PR. This property I am sure you all must be remembering from your previous classes geometry. In geometry we have done through a point outside the circle if you draw two tangents length of the tangents would be same. So PQ and PR they are called lengths of the tangent. Okay. Now if PQ and PR are two tangents and point is x1 comma y1 and if I take circles equation as x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0 then what then next way is PQ equal to PR I want to use and how do we get actually that length PQ and PR that would be under root x1 square plus y1 square plus 2gx1 plus 2fy1 plus c. Where we have seen this expression x1 square plus y1 square plus 2gx1 plus 2fy1 plus c. Those who have watched the previous videos, they can answer this question. What is that expression? That expression stands for s1. I had used the not notation s1 in my previous videos. So understand this, you will have to evaluate quantity under root s1 to get lengths of the tangent. PQ and PR, they would be equal and they would be equal to under root s1. I keep saying certain things repeatedly so that they permanently get you know stored in your mind. So if anywhere if you are asked to find length of the tangents drawn from a point then you can always remember this as under root s1. Mind you please there are other ways also to get length of the tangent. What could be that method? Method could be that r is known to you. You want length pq. Point p is given to you. Center is known to you. You can always get length or distance cp if you know distance cp if you know distance cq which is nothing but radius is it difficult to evaluate pq those who are not interested in knowing formulae they can use such techniques or such methods and you can always get finally length of the tangent pq in this manner also i hope everyone followed what i'm saying and here i end my session i will again meeting you next time with something new till then stay tuned thank you Hope you have liked this video. To subscribe, please click on this side. Or if you want to place an order for the book, please click on this side. Thank you.